So for the year 2021, I broke a personal record when it comes to passive income. Sa channel na to, gusto nating matuto ng tamang process ng pagpapayaman or road to financial freedom. And they say, after working hard for your money, let your money work hard for you. Recently lang, pinag-usapan natin yung peso cost averaging and swing trading. But for today, let's talk about dividend investing. Sa dividend investing, meron tayong three main ingredients. Time, compounding interest, and dividend reinvesting. I will share with you how much passive income I earned uh, this year, 2021, and hopefully by the of the video mas ma-inspire pa kayo to start your own journey if you haven't started or to ramp up your uh, journey towards financial freedom. There are two main ways to receive dividends through the stock market. The first one is of course through stocks. Stocks are just proof that you have some ownership of a public company. So of course, it goes without saying, kung kumita yung company, then kikita ka rin as a part owner. Yung mga companies na maliliit pa lang and therefore marami pang opportunities to expand, they will reinvest the company earnings to expand the business. These are what we call growth stocks and companies like AC Energy, Pure Gold, and Converge are examples of growth companies. Because hindi pa sila ganun kalaki and therefore hindi pa ganun ka-stable, it is much risky to invest in these companies in these growth stocks but remember higher risk higher reward din so on the other hand naman if a company is established enough or big enough nababawasan yung mga interested na investors kasi nga hindi na ganun kalaki yung potential for the stock price to go up or to increase to solve this problem na baka maubusan sila ng investors dito papasok yung dividends big companies or what we call blue chips like Meralco San Miguel and BDO they give away their extra income in the form of dividends to to their investors. Emphasize ko lang ulit na individual stocks or individual public companies are not required to give out dividends but if they keep a consistent schedule, uh, if they pay out year after year after year, then it's a win-win for the investors and for the company itself. Tayong investors, we win because we receive a predictable income and they also win kasi yung stock price ng company nila mas nagiging stable kasi walang basta-basta magbibenta. Kumbaga, through predictable dividends, we develop a mutual sense of trust on each other. Okay, so ganito yung pinaka-simple ng explanation ng isang REIT. First question, hapunta ka na ba sa SM? Oo, okay. Second question, yung SM na napuntahan mo may mga tindahan ba? Malamang, di ba? Sa mata nating mga consumers, ang tawag natin ay stores or shops. Pero sa mata ni SM, sila ay tinatawag na tenants. These tenants pay for rental space to SM para makapagtin na sila. Okay, so napansin mo rin ba na iba-iba yung types of tenants? Meron clothing stores, food establishments, meron din commercial banks, and even offices. Regardless of the category or the industry or the tenant profile, REITs are simply companies that own, operate, and manage income-producing properties. Okay, let me be perfectly clear. In this example, hindi si SM yung REIT. If ever matuloy yung plans to create a REIT for SM, that company will be the one to manage yung sangkatutak na SM malls sa buong Pilipinas. We received some initial rumors about the SM REIT, pero wala pang follow-up na news. Pero I think the reality talaga is Filipinos like spending. So personally, I believe na matutuloy talaga yung SM REIT sooner or later. Okay, so enough concept. Pag-usapan natin kung paano tayo kikita sa mga REITs. REITs are not that special, so hindi mo kailangan ma-intimidate dito. And naalala nyo ba yung description ng isang stock na nagbabayad ng dividends sa mga investors? Alos ganun lang din ang isang REIT kasi REITs are also stocks. That's very important kasi it implies that we can buy REITs in the stock market. But the difference is they are much much, much, much more predictable in terms of the dividend payout. So you see guys, sa mga individual stocks, they are not required by any law to pay out dividends. Yung mga stocks that pay out consistently every year, um, maybe for the past 5 years or 10 years or 20 years, they are doing this out of their own volition or kumbaga voluntary, voluntary dividend payout. So what happens if for some reason, uh, even though nagbibigay sila for the past 100 years, what happens if they decide not to give dividends this year? That is totally legal and wala tayong habol. Now, speaking of what is legal and hindi legal, REITs are mandated or required by the government, by the law, to pay out at least 90% of their rental income to the investors or to us. In other words, hindi makakaroon ng taon na hindi ka mabibigyan ng dividends. Palaging nandyan yan. Hence the predictability. Actually, dun sa pinaka-reset upload natin, we compared and ranked the top 5 of office reads in the country so if you are interested in that you can check that video later
So for the year 2021, I broke a personal record when it comes to passive income. Pero before I reveal my total passive income from dividends this year, explore muna natin yung record na binasag. For 2018, nakatanggap ako ng tumataginting na passive income of 298 pesos without doing anything. For the following year or 2019, this income grew by 185%. And I received 850 pesos without doing anything. And just last year or 2020 or kasagsagan ng COVID-19 pandemic, this income grew by almost five times or 384 percent. And I received 4,120 pesos without doing anything. So if you noticed, I kept saying without doing anything kasi nga lahat ng values na pinakita natin ay passive and without active effort. The term passive income is overused in the investing world pero para sa akin talaga, dividends are the best example of uh, passive income without doing any additional active effort. As long as you did your research about the company and you understand the three main ingredients of dividend investing, again, so that's time, compounding interest, and dividend reinvesting, then all you have to do after you buy your stock or your REIT, all you have to do is sit back and wait. The younger you start, the more time you have and the more the odds will be in your favor. I started this process four years ago and tuloy lang ako sa day job ko as a software engineer. Hindi naman ako nag-quit kaagad. I also make sure to pay myself first. So, ang ibig sabihin niyan, uh, I try to save about 40% of my income and invest some of it. Tapos yung matitira, uh, siya yung hatiin ko between bills, food, um, entertainment, gifts and charity and syempre, hindi naman tayo per effect, meron din konting luho kung may matitira. In short, I live below my means by following the formula income minus savings equals expenses. Medyo late na nga ako nag-start guys eh. Pero, yun nga, ang most important thing is I started. Kung masastock ka lang sa mindset na napag-iwanan ka na or maybe it's too late for you to begin your journey, I think that's okay kasi hindi ko kayo pipilitin. Hindi ko kayo sasabihan na kung nag-invest ka 30 years ago, then yung 500 pesos mo, naging 500 million I am not qualified to give any of you advice because magkakaiba yung uh, risk tolerance natin. We have our own responsibilities. As long as you are comfortable with what you're doing financially, then uh, that's the most important part. I'm just here to share my experiences, hoping to express, never to impress. Let's start by eliminating the months when I did not receive any passive income. Wala po akong natanggap na dividends on January, February, August, and October. For March, nakatanggap ako ng 1,260 pesos from Union Bank. I bought UBP during the last quarter of 2020 ata because I saw tremendous value and hindi siya kasama sa big three which are BDO, uh, MBT, and BPI which means UBP is still technically a growth stock. I love UBP pero hindi to financial advice kasi they They are spearheading the digitalization of the finance industry in the Philippines. Tapos yung isang recent news about Union Bank is they finalized their deal with Citi to take over their business in the country. Next, I also received 243 pesos from Globe. Globe is a blue chip company pero during this time hindi pa ako convinced doon sa story niya pero balikan natin siya later on. Moving on to April, I received 331.2 pesos from Nickel, Nickel Asia. And before I forget, uh, itong values na mga pinapakita they are all net values which means tanggal na yung tax and ito na yung automatically credited values to my investment accounts. Next up, 675.27 pesos from AC Energy and this was a pleasant surprise kasi irregular magbigay ng dividends si AC Energy. The following three paychecks are from Meralco and uh, semi-annual magbigay si Meralco ng dividends. So you will be seeing more from Meralco later in the video. First paycheck, 422.5 pesos. Second, 915.41 pesos. And third, 3,661.63 pesos. All of this from from Meralco. For the month of May, nakatanggap tayo ng konting profits from Chicken Joy. We received two paychecks of 56.16 pesos each from JFC. Moving on to June, I received two paychecks from Globe, pareho silang 243 pesos, and another 823.5 pesos from RRHI or Robinson's Retail Holdings Incorporated. Pay close attention kung gaano kaliit yung mga paychecks na to individually, but later on they will all add up and you will be surprised 
surprised to know how much I earned without doing anything. Okay, let's move on to the next month. For July, I received 1,620 from FNI. Okay guys, so this is a perfect opportunity to tell you na in my dividend investing strategy, I don't necessarily hold on to a stock forever. So for example, it of FNI, I found better opportunities to buy or to move my capital to compared to if I just hold on to this mining company. Kaya naman, all throughout the year, pinapaikot-ikot ko lang yung pera. In other words, yung capital ko that generated dividends in January, that same capital could be reinvested in, let's say, September. Tapos may dividends ako ulit for that month. And speaking of September, sinuerte ako sa Globe kasi as I kept checking the developing stories, the more it became appealing to me. You see guys, Globe is no longer just a telecommunications company. Nakalista pa rin siya sa PSE website under the telecommunications industry. Pero personally, I think mas bagay na sa kanya yung term or industry na digital solutions or digital services. Hindi ko na iisa-isahin yung mga digital services under it, pero I think this is the year that we truly saw the massive public adoption of Gcash. Okay, so ang dami-dami kong sinabi, pero ang point ko lang naman is nagdagdag ako ng positions in Globe. And because of that, I received 3 paychecks from Globe this September. First is 607.5 pesos. Next, 1,093.50 pesos. And another 243 pesos. All of these are from Globe. And also in September, I received 3 more paychecks from Meralco. The first one is 273.08 pesos. The second is 591.67 pesos. And finally, 2,366.68 pesos. All of this from Meralco. So sa November lang ako nakatanggap ng dividends ko from REITs, specifically MREIT and RCR. And I am 99% sure na makikita niyo ulit itong dalawang REITs na to next year when we recreate this video. Kasi right now, I don't see myself uh, selling these positions anytime soon. For Emirate, I received 540 pesos. For RCR naman, dalawang paychecks. Isang 429.66 pesos and another 1,116 pesos. And finally, for December, my final paycheck of the year came from San Miguel Food and Beverage or FB, which was 180 pesos. Okay guys, so let's review. In 2018, I received 298.08 pesos. In 2019, 850.32 pesos. In 2020, 4,120.55 pesos. And for 2021, my total passive income is 17,991.92 pesos. So, uunahan ko na yung mga questions nyo ha. Is 17,000 pesos life-changing? No. Makakapag-retire na ba ako if I receive 17,000 pesos every year? Probably not. Pero proud ba ako sa sarili ko kasi I learned how to control my impulse purchases? Said no to instant gratification and stopped buying sh** I don't need oh naman syempre from 2020 to 2021 my dividends increased by 336% maraming factors that contributed to this growth first of all I added more uh, dividend paying stocks to my core portfolio for income protection and predictability and second uh, the PSE launched 4 additional REITs this year which I bought 2 of pero I think the most important factor to this growth is hindi ko wini-withdraw yung mga dividends that I receive. I just kept rolling them over or reinvesting them kasi I'm hoping that one day I will um, completely eliminate my active salary and replace it with passive income. Or as we said at the start, to make my money work hard for me. I'll see you on the next one. Merry Christmas! Happy New Year! Bye!